Okay, so I will give you a very quick demonstration of two new types of analysis and visualizations that are available in LEAP 2020. And you can access both of them in the summaries view in LEAP. So the first one that I will show you is the MAC curves or the marginal abatement cost curve report. The MAC curves are a very useful tool for comparing the costs and the abatement potential of various mitigation options, which are usually very context specific. So this tool is very helpful for policymakers to prioritize which measures to pursue and to prioritize those that are the most cost effective and the most ambition, ambitious ones. So as you can see in this example, the MAC curves are comprised of a series of blocks. Each one of these blocks represents an individual measure, which has also been modeled as a separate scenario in LEAP. So here in the legend, you can see a very short description of the mitigation measures that are being considered in this example. And for each block, the width of the block indicates the avoided emissions. So the widest bars represent those measures that have the highest abatement potentials. And on the other hand, the height of each bar indicates the incremental cost per unit of emission reduction. So in the chart, the blocks are ordered from left to right according to their cost. So at the left, you can see those measures that are the most cost effective ones, which could even have net cost savings if they appear below the, the X axis. And to the right, you can find the measures that have the higher cost. So how to read this? For example, if we look at the electric vehicles, you'll see that this policy has a unit cost of about 50 US dollars per ton. You can also see this in the table view, which makes it easier to see the actual numbers. And it has a potential of around 25 million tons of CO2 equivalent. The chart also gives you the average cost, which is displayed as a line. So actually the area enclosed by this line and the X axis represents the cumulative cost of implementing all of these measures. Now you'll see that in this example, most of the measures are from the demand side. So they are related to changes in technology in the household, in the transport and in the industrial sector mainly. However, implementing measures in the supply side or in the transformation sector can also have an impact on the cost or the potential of demand side measures. So to explore that, let's go back to the analysis view and we will now add a scenario in the supply side. So in the list of scenarios, you'll see that I have already added a scenario here for the power sector, which considers a shift towards a more renewable power generation matrix and also a reduction in the transmission and distribution losses. So what I'll do is that I'll select the scenario from the list and tick here where it says including MAC report. And now we will go back and see how that changed the MAC curve. But before going back, I'll just mention that because of the way in which LEAP generates the MAC curves, it is only possible to include individual scenarios. So that means that this mitigation scenario, for example, which inherits all of these individual measures, cannot be included as such in the MAC curve. So even if you tick here, you will get an error message when you go back to the summaries view. So now let's go back to the summaries view. And every time that you change something in the data set, we need to manually refresh the MAC curve. And this is because LEAP generates these MAC curves using a retrospective approach. So what LEAP is doing now is that it is calculating all of the scenarios to identify which one is the most cost effective one. Then it plots that one first at the left of the chart, like I showed you before, and then it recalculates all of the remaining scenarios, but this time assuming that the first one has already been implemented. And this is very important because it is what lets LEAP consider possible interdependencies between different options. So for example, how a supply side measure can have an impact on the demand side and vice versa. So here it's now refreshed. And you will see in the chart view that this measure that we just implemented for the power sector is now the one with the highest abatement potential. And that actually implementing this measure had an impact on other demand side measures. So if we look again at the electric vehicle policy, this one, let's see it in the table view. 
you'll see that it now has about seven times the abatement potential that it, that it did before when it was implemented in a more carbon intensive um, system. And the cost is about one fifth of what it was before. So it's now a much more cost effective policy. So this is just an example of how um, LEAP can consider these interdependencies between different options. The MAC curves in LEAP are highly customizable. So through this manage summaries button, you can add additional MAC curves and have each one with different settings. You can update the settings here. For example, you can change which scenario to be used as the counterfactual or which branches in LEAP should be used um, to represent the cost and the impact. And for example, instead of looking at GHG emissions, you might be interested in looking at um, or ranking policies um, based on their potential to reduce other types of pollutants. So you might want to look into black carbon or particulate matters or other types of, of pollutants. So you can apply different filters available in LEAP to create such a, a report. I already saved one for the particulate matters. So let me show you that one. And you can see here how the same list of measures may rank very differently. And some measures, for example, reducing open burning of waste might not be so important for reducing the GHGs, but it definitely has a lot of potential for reducing particulate matter. So this is something interesting to analyze when you're trying to prioritize um, mitigation measures. Now, the second report that I will show you is the decomposition analysis. And this one you can also find here in the summaries view. Um, this type of report can help you analyze the trends in scenarios by decomposing those trends into various contributing factors. Um, and LEAP does that based on the IPAD and the Kaya identity methodologies. You can learn more about those methodologies here in the, lab, in the uh, help system within LEAP. But in general, the default report that is included in LEAP and breaks down the trend in the GHG emissions, which is the indicator shown here in the y-axis. The first column right here shows the starting value in 2010 for GHG emissions, and the last bar shows the value in 2040. So you'll see there was an increase in the emissions over time. And all of these intermediate bars represent those contributing factors that explain this trend. So in this case, there's the population, there's the GDP per capita, there's the final energy consumption per unit of GDP, and the primary energy per unit of final energy consumption, and both of these are a measure of energy intensity. And finally, there's the um, emissions per unit of energy, which is a measure of the carbon intensity. The colors in this chart indicate whether each of these uh, factors contribute to an increase or to a decrease in the indicator. So here in the baseline, you'll see how there was an increase in the population in the GDP per capita, which is a measure of um, wealth and in the carbon intensity, but there was a decrease in the energy intensity. Now, besides from comparing two years for a single scenario, you can also change the view and you can change and you can compare two different scenarios for a given year. So for example, in 2040, here we have the baseline and the mitigation scenario. So you'll see that in the mitigation scenario, which had all of the measures that we saw before in the MAC curve, there were lower emissions in 2040. And this was as a result of a further reduction in the energy intensity and in the carbon intensity you'll see that the population and the GDP per capita didn't have an effect or didn't contribute to this decrease in emissions because they were the same in both scenarios. You can also see this report as a bar chart. So you can see for each year what was the corresponding contribution of each of these factors. And just like the MAC curves, you can add additional reports and you can edit in this case, you can change which are the contributing factors and you can change also what is the ultimate indicator that you're trying to analyze or to explain. So again, you could um, select here black carbon, other type of pollutant, or even um, premature deaths if you're using the, the LEAP IBC model, which is another feature here in LEAP. 